Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I thought I'll do uh, basically talk about uh, Terraform Provisioner. So this is a little out of sort video because I have, I'm not doing any series right now. Like I did the Boto 3 series, right? So this is just one of those ad hoc videos because I was reading through the Provisioner documentation and I thought that this can be a very interesting talking to topic to talk about, right? So yeah, let's let's talk about Provisioner. So in Terraform, the basically Terraform Provisioners, they are used to uh, run or perform some actions either on the remote machine, the machine which you're building using Terraform or on the local machine from where you are running Terraform, right? So there are two things to this. So um, either it can be a remote machine which you are building using Terraform or it can be a local machine uh, from where you are running Terraform and you can perform actions depending upon your requirement, right? So we'll see in the example what, what I'm saying, right? So that's what provisioners do. Uh, basically two types of provisioners, uh, there's a remote and local, so remote exec and local exec, what they're called. And even the Terraform documentation says that they should be the lender of last resort for you. So if you have a better way of doing things, of provisioning your machine, you should probably do that, right? Like for example, user data. So, I mean, you should prefer using user data instead of uh, running things via uh, remote exec, right? So they should be the lender of last, last resort for you. All right, so yeah, now let's see uh, them in action probably, yes, right? So I actually have a main Terraform file, you can see, so I'm actually creating an EC2 instance, right? So nothing special, I think I've used this file in a lot of demos. So this is what I'm doing, I'm just creating an EC2 instance of type T2 micro, this is the AMI, region, count, things like that, right? Okay. Now we'll just go inside main.tf and first, and yes, the provisioner definition goes inside the resource definition, right? So inside this resource, inside this would be my provisioner definition. Okay. So just, just FYI. Okay. So I'll open a block and let me just tab, not tab, four spaces rather and provisioner and this would be first let me show you local exec right local exec and i'll open a block okay and the arguments which it takes is a command so command equals say what i want to do is i want to say echo self dot public underscore IP and I would put this to a file say IP dot txt right so this is uh, yeah, self dot this would I think require the special syntax so this would be dollar and curly braces okay so now what i'm doing here let me just first close the provisioner block so what i'm doing that after my resource is built i want the public ip which is associated with this resource to be echoed into a file called ip.txt in my local machine from where i'm running this right so output would actually output the public IP and this over here would actually echo the uh, the public IP into an IP.txt file. So you can see the usage of it, right? So if you're building say uh, an inventory file, right? Maybe for say Ansible. So this is actually very useful. You can build, I mean, you can use dynamic inventories, but you can also build inventory like this. So you can use local exec and you can build your inventory for any of your uh, configuration management tool, right? So let's try this first. Save it. Clear the screen. And let's do Terraform apply. Not to approve. So let's see. Okay plan is created 
and this will take maybe a minute. So I'll just pause the video, I mean, till the time it's creating. Okay, so it took 40 seconds and you can see over here that it executed my local exec provisioner and you can also see the detail of it, right? So you see it executed bin sh hyphen c and echoed the public IP, which we got from the self keyword into ip.txt and here's the output of the output block, right? So the same public IP. And now if I just do cat on ip.txt file, you can see that IP is there, right? So, I mean, like this, you can actually build an inventory for all the resources uh, you're creating, right? So this, this is local exec. And one thing with provisioner is that you can also tell them when to run, right? So there's a keyword called when. So suppose if I want to run a particular uh, provisioner on destroy action, when I'm doing Terraform destroy, so that provisioner will trigger only when I do Terraform destroy, right? So you can do that as well. Okay, so let's get rid of this first. Destroy. And now I'll show you uh, the use of uh, remote exec, how you actually do remote exec, executing commands on the remote server, which, which we just provisioned, right? So remote exec uh, requires another block called connection because, I mean, if you think in terms of say AWS console, so you can create EC2 instance from AWS console, but to SSH into that particular machine, you you are you have like multiple options, right? You can use the key, you can use the SSM agent, SSM sessions, right? Uh, session manager, basically. So there are multiple options for you. Uh, you can use also a, a browser-based uh, connection, right? So in the similar way, we in the Terraform definition, we actually have to provide a connection definition to tell Terraform how to actually SSH into the machine and then execute a particular, I mean, whatever we tell it, right? And one use of remote exec, uh, what I feel is when you want to trigger your configuration agent, say I'm running Chef, I mean, I'm using Chef as my configuration management tool. So at the, I mean, I can use remote exec to say run Chef client, right? So that, that one use I can think of. Okay, so my resource is destroyed. Let me clear the screen. And again, go to main.tf and we'll get rid of, or we'll just not get rid of, we'll just change this to remote exec, right? And the command will go because it does not have keyword command. It has a different keyword, which takes a list of commands. And that keyword is inline right and inline would be equal to uh yeah so i would do say something like sudo yum update like that's that's what i can think of right now okay you can run say chef client or you can run ansible uh, anything you want right so that's pretty much it and then i would create a connection block to tell it how to connect to this machine. So, invitation, yeah, connection. And this block will take few entries like, so type would be one, which would be SSH, right? Next would be user so for me user would be ec2 hyphen user right and then would be host so which host to connect to and that we can get from self dot public ip so connect to this host which is the public ip of the host i'm building and the last thing would be private key and private key for me would be file. And I have the key in the current directory, which is app, uh, app key.pem. Uh, app key.pem. I'm not sure of the name. Let me just double check it. Okay. And that's my connection block. 
let me just double check the name appkey.pen yeah so that's that's my key file okay so now let me just cat it out and file appkey.pen okay okay so let me clear the screen and then we do terraform apply proof and i have an error somewhere invalid multi-line string somewhere i messed up missing argument separator something i think i okay let me just go into in the tf and see what i did wrong okay uh, file. So, okay i think this file should not be like this it should be something like this i believe i think i'm using it i'm not using it correctly let's see otherwise i'll just check the documentation right let's try this and again syntax error somewhere multiple lines okay so i think i i think i'm yeah let's clear the screen this looks ugly let's go inside let me see if i've open closed all the tag is here closed provisional exec is closed here this is closed oh shit ah please i think i missed this you see one semicolon one uh, quotation mark can wreak havoc so now errors have reduced but there's still i uh, mean not ef invalid character dollar sign okay so let me just refer to the documentation of this right rather than trying my hands on my own let me just quickly go through the documentation and see what I'm doing wrong. And file function. think as for the documentation I mean, what I've seen in the example this also needs to go in the quotation marks okay let's try again ha huh. didn't get any errors so this should be good yeah finally so yeah I mean you don't need to worry about the uh, syntax errors right you can actually fix them very easily it's a uh, logical errors you should be worrying about but in terraform you don't actually see logical errors because because the way it is built so this is going to take again like 40 50 seconds so either i can pause the video or let i mean i'll just let it run because you'll see the output of uh, yum update over here itself that's a that's a nice thing and please do comment uh, in the video like what what else you want me to create right because i'm running out of uh, topics to create videos on so it would be great so you can see 
uh, my remote exec has triggered it has connected to my machine and you can see the output of uh, yum update right so this is actually cool and it has completed and my server is up now and you can see the public IP. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this video. So I wanted to show you provisioners, remote exec and local exec. I hope you got the usage of both. And as a side note or postscript, use them as your last resort, right? If, if you're not coming up with any better way to do things, then only go for provisioners. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you like the videos, guys. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching.